Hey everyone, this is Uri for Gorilla Poker. In this video I'm gonna show you guys all sorts of crazy bluffs I've made over the past year or so and break down my thought process. Hope you guys enjoy it and take something away from it and uh, let's get into the hands. So uh, this first hand is, is a bit silly. I min raise and I get an ace ace king board and one of the things about short stacked play is that uh, when I raise very often if the other player has any ace he's gonna shove preflop uh, just for fold equity so when it comes ace ace king this is my board literally I can push the other guy around and uh, he probably has to fold an insane amount of the time so I'm gonna bet everything in my range and no need to bet big because if I have an ace or a king he's basically drawing almost dead with everything so I bet I get a call turns a king and donk bet half pot and here this is a point where i was pausing to think and i'm like you know things in poker have to make sense and very often uh when something doesn't make sense for value uh, that's because it's a bluff the king pairs the board but the board is completely static and it doesn't really change relative hand strengths if i had an ace and he had a king he's still losing if he had a king and i didn't have an ace he's still winning other than that if he has an ace or a king surely he doesn't need any form of protection so it, it feels really weird for this donk bet to actually be an ace or a king of course some players do play like that but uh but for more experienced guys, there is no thought process that leads to you donk betting, holding an ace or a king, uh, which leaves me thinking this guy probably has some sort of bluff. So if he has a bluff, and I have eight three of hearts, uh, what should I do? What's the max EV play? Imagine that we see the other guy's cards and he has a bluff, but we don't know. Maybe he has nine three. Uh, so what I decided to do is call but this is what I like to call an aggressive call uh, because I'm calling with the intention of raising him later on. And the idea is because I think he's bluffing and he's unlikely to go all in on the river, I get to pick up this extra river bet. Uh, $30 can go buy myself a nice lunch or dinner somewhere. So I get 8-7 of diamonds on the button, very nice hand. Uh, cut off raises to $25, I decide to 3-bet. This is a hand that I will sometimes 3-bet and sometimes call and there are a lot of factors that go into it but, but generally both are fine. I get called and board comes ace, five, deuce, two tone and villain checks. Because the board has an ace and two low cards and I 3-bet, I'm gonna have a region of uh, like kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines type of hands. They're like strong in terms of their overall equity but they have very poor playability. They're, they're kind of sandwiched in the middle, like they can't really get value, they're bad as bluff catchers. So uh, a lot of playing this board uh, is making sure that your over pairs are not completely isolated all by themselves in a range. So uh, a beginning player might check back kings through nines and bet a bunch of other stuff, and if you do that and anyone realizes that's what you're doing, you leave yourself very, very vulnerable. What I want to do is be more tricky with my ranges. I'm always going to put kind of tricky hands in tricky situations. And because this is a board where I have all those over pairs, I'm not going to want to necessarily just uh, bet everything because those hands don't benefit very much from betting. Uh, so here I decide to check back my flush draw and when you see the flush draw imagine that this is checking back with some aces, some over pairs, various types of hands, uh, turns the seven of hearts, uh, villain bets and I'm gonna call river six of clubs, he bets again and uh, I decide to go all in. Uh, now uh, there are a few ideas behind this play, I, I will say that uh, Whenever you make these kind of crazy looking bluff raises, it's nice to have a hand that has something to do with the situation. The really nice thing about having 8-7 of diamonds specifically is that any strategy he chooses, uh, I'm removing pocket 7s from his range and I'm removing one combo of 8-9 suited from his range. So I'm removing four of the hands in his range that would always call this shove. And four combos is a lot in this situation when you think about 
how many hands does villain have that will always call this? Uh, I'm, I'm even removing a7 suited, uh, like one combo of a7 suited, so five combos. So the fact that I remove five combos that are always calling the shove is going to make this probably a very, very profitable all-in. And then the question is, you know, maybe you're better off just calling, I don't know, but this hand has really nice properties for shoving. I think once you look into a call, the properties are not as sexy, so I opt to shove and get the fold. As far as what type of hands I could have for value, uh, certainly something like uh, sevens, pocket aces, eight, nine suited of my own, maybe a six suited or a seven suited. Okay, so last hand, this gets raised from the cutoff. I decide to make uh, what I consider a very loose three bet. I don't remember what prompted me to three bet this hand, but but usually I'm I'm calling or folding with fives. Get called. Board is three four a two tone. On this board, both players have a lot of hands with a ton of equity, and fives is in an awkward spot no matter what you do. If multiple bets go in, things are going to look ugly for you. So there are various ways to play this hand. Uh, I think betting is fine and checking is fine. As long as uh, you come to terms with the fact that if the other guy puts money in, it's going to get ugly and you're probably going to have to fold. In these situations, I often choose to go with a more aggressive option. The idea with this bet is I'm probably going to bet once and try to show the hand down. Uh, but like I said, if the other guy puts a lot of money in, uh, fives is, is going far away. So I bet face a min raise. Kind of a, a funny sizing choice because it's very, very difficult to me to find any hands that are folding to the min raise. It's a bit of an action freezer for some people where uh, if I have something like king queen or ace queen or ace king or pocket sevens, uh, I'm just going to call and turn and check the turn and maybe he gets to show down a bit cheap. So it's important to uh, play back against this with various draws and over pairs, but I think fives will just call. Turns a nine of diamonds. Uh, goes check check obviously i'm gonna check fold fives i think fives at this point in the hand is basically a pair of napkins it's gonna be very hard to win so river six of diamonds and here like i said because fives feels very very weak um i was trying to think if this is a spot where i should bluff with pocket fives if i had a flush draw i would probably have shoved the flop uh, or three bet the flop quite often versus a min race. But I could still have some ace king, ace queen, king queen, ace jack with one diamond. The issue for me here, and this is what I was thinking during the hand, is that I also have all those combos with no diamonds, and because he min raised, I can't, I wouldn't have folded any of those. Uh, so I actually have quite a lot of bluffing candidates here. And actually so many bluffing candidates that I was a bit afraid uh, that if I make some sort of big bet, which is what I should be making if I have a high diamond, I just get called by a hand like 7-8 uh, of hearts or 10-9 of hearts or 10-9 of clubs. Uh, because my range has so many, you know, queen-jack of spades, like so, queen-jack of clubs, jack-10, all these hands that, that had to float the flop min raise because it was so small. Uh, so for this reason, I decided to check fives and hope that maybe a villain has ace-3 or ace-4. And then he bet 365. And here I started thinking, what kind of high flushes is he going to have? Because generally when you have a not flush draw type of hand on this board you don't min raise so i don't think he had the not flush draw on the flop or a high flush draw uh, it, it's a lot more natural to raise bigger with those hands uh what about a one diamond hand well if he min raised with a high one diamond hand and he got the diamond turn i think a lot of people would have just gone with a hand and bet big on the turn I was pretty perplexed looking at this. I'm like, you know, of, of course, ev everything I'm, I'm saying could be wrong. Nothing here is, is rocket science. But I don't think he's very often going to have a flush. 
uh, what is he gonna have? Uh, you know, maybe he has some low pair. Maybe he has deuces, five, sevens, ace, three, seven, eight. Uh, I could see any of those hands turning themselves into a bluff. Or, right, like min raise flop with pocket sevens, turn goes check, check, and then you look here at the river and he's like, ah, I'm never winning and, and just bluff. Uh, and I, I was a bit afraid of calling the river because I thought uh, I might run into some better pair, even six, seven of hearts or something. Uh, turned into a bluff once in a while, while I had a really strong feeling he'd never really have a flush. Not to mention, if he somehow does have a flush and it's not a nut flush, maybe he folds it to the shove, because really, guys, who bluffs like this, right? So, go all in and get the fold. Good result, ship the pot. So hope you guys enjoyed watching the crazy bluff hands. I tried to select the more interesting hands I've played over the past year or so. These are all kind of unique, interesting situations. I didn't pick the more standard bluffs. Of course, there are a million standard bluff spots, but I thought these hands were pretty cool and, and pretty interesting. If people make mistakes, you want to take advantage of them whether you have eight three of hearts or pocket fives or where, whether you have the eight seven of diamond perfect blocker hand uh, you want to do it in all of those spots not just wait and wait and wait and feel handcuffed because your cards don't suit the situation hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next time